welcome to this week's Productivity Enhancer. Today we're going to take a look at the Warp Stabilizer in Premiere Pro. And you may be asking yourself, if we're going to look at a feature in Premiere Pro, why do we have Adobe After Effects open? And the answer to that very good question would be that the Warp Stabilizer actually has its roots in Adobe After Effects. The original thinking was that Warp Stabilization is an effect and it belongs in After Effects, but people have really been clamoring for this feature to show up directly embedded in Premiere Pro. So that's exactly what Adobe's done. However, to familiarize ourselves with the warp stabilization, we're going to begin here in Adobe After Effects. So let's take a look at our clip. Here we have me running alongside my dog Jack, holding the camera with my hands with no special equipment. Prepare yourself, it's pretty rough. So we'll just take that much of it. So, that clip unto itself is virtually unusable. Just scrubbing through it, we can see how unstable it is. So what we want to do is we want to go and find our warp stabilizer. And we can scroll down until we find warp stabilizer, or you can continue typing in both words. But once you find it, you're just going to grab it and drag it right on top of the clip. However, I've actually applied this warp stabilizer to this clip because it does take some time. This is a real CPU intensive activity. However, for time's sake, I've already gone ahead and done it, and it's hidden under here under effects. So if we just twirl this triangle down, you can see warp stabilizer, and we can twirl that triangle down and see a few more effects that we can tweak in here. However, let's just leave it default right now, turn it on, and then let's take a look at that clip again with the warp stabilizer. It's a lot better. It's still not perfect, but you can see that After Effects has cropped away a lot of the material on the outside in order to maintain the subject, which is the dog, in a stable environment. So it's excellent in After Effects. That means it's going to be excellent in Premiere Pro. So let's just minimize this. And here we have virtually the same clip, a little bit longer version of it. And let's just play it from the beginning and take a look. Pretty familiar, very bumpy. Unusable footage. So I've already gone ahead and added the warp stabilizer to this clip as well. So once I toggle the warp stabilizer on, you're going to see instantly that the clip is cropped and reoriented so the dog can be the focal point and allow everything else to stabilize around that subject. So let's go back to the beginning with the warp stabilizer turned on and take a look. Pretty cool. It's a lot better. It's by no means perfect. However, please keep in consideration how terrible this clip was to begin with. And I'll even remind you by toggling that off and let's watch it from the beginning with the warp stabilizer off. It induces seasickness. So with the warp stabilizer, the eye does catch a little bit of the warp in the pixels, especially where the color is contrasted more. However, it's still a vast improvement over the starting point and this is just the default settings so let's take a look at the warp stabilizer I have it found right here in my effects control if you do not have your effects control open that can be found under window and effects control and before we take a look I just want to make the point that uh, you can search for the warp stabilizer the same exact way that you can in After Effects and warp stabilizer shows up when you type it in in the effects search bar also it works just the same way drag and drop but we don't need to do that. So in the effects control under warp stabilizer, you can see that we have a lot of different options. You can change the motion smoothness to smooth motion or no motion. We're just gonna leave that on smooth motion right now because that smooths out all of the rough edges that it creates. You can also adjust the actual value of that smoothness. Right now it's set to 50 by default, but you can toggle it up and down at your leisure. Let's uh, leave it right around 60 make it a little smoother that helps just a little bit you can even change the method that the program uses to stabilize you can stabilize by position position scale and rotation you can change it by perspective and by the subspace warp the subspace warp is set by default the descriptions of all of these go into way too complex computation talk and I'd like to avoid that so let's just keep moving you can adjust how the borders get set uh, the default is Stabilize Crop and Auto Scale. And what the stabilizer is doing is it's tracking certain pixels, certain anchor points, if you will, in the clip that will allow the program to track the progress and then kind of match those anchor points as best as possible. So with the default settings of Stabilize Crop and Auto Scale, it's not only stabilizing your clip, but it's cropping it so you won't have any of the rotation that comes from stabilization. And it also scales the clip to help with that as well. You can choose just Stabilizing Crop 
or stabilize only, or you can stabilize and synthesize the edges, which requires even more complex computation. So once again, we're going to stick with the default, and you can mess with the scale a little bit here, but we're just going to rely on the program to find the right scaling. And then if we go down a little further, we have advanced settings. Under advanced, we can really define how picky we want the program to be. If you'd like a detailed analysis, then that will make your clip even smoother, but it will require more time and power from your computer. I'll put a check mark in this box to show you what happens, and it actually analyzes the data again and finds more connection points to help with the stabilization. This can take up to a few minutes, so we're just going to kind of leave this for now uh, and move on. You can see that we have rolling shutter ripple, and the rolling shutter ripple has to do with how DSLRs and point-and-shoot cameras and even cell phone cameras don't necessarily take full frames at a time when they're shooting video, but rather they shoot one portion of the frame only. For instance, it would shoot just the top section, and then it'd run another line of the top section, and then go back and run another line. And what this means is that an individual frame in your clip may have been taken at two or more different times. To show an example of this, I have this clip here. I'll just play it from the beginning. You can see that we're at half quality playback here. So we still should get a pretty good playback. Let's try it again. And you can see that there are certain little problems that show up. It becomes a little bit clearer when we pause it. This is very subtle, but you can see that this line is a little bowed and this one bows out a little bit too. It's just a little funky. Let's play it again. And when it plays through, you can see these lines as each individual frame changes. So the reason that this rolling shutter problem affects DSLRs and uh, handheld cameras is because the shutter speed is way quicker than it should be for the frame rate of the camera. In this instance, uh, the frame rate is just 30 frames per second. However, the shutter rate is 8 hundredths of a second. This next shot is very similar, but the shutter rate is a hundredth of a second, so it may be a little easier to work with. The uh, rule of thumb should be that your shutter speed should be twice as long as your frame rate. So if you have a 30 frames per second frame rate, your shutter speed should be a 60th of a second. But what happens when your shutter speed is set way too high? Rolling shutter happens. So back to this clip, you can see that I've already added the warp stabilizer, and we do have this rolling shutter ripple right here. And we can even change some of the settings on the rolling shutter ripple. For instance, right now it's set to enhanced reduction. The enhanced reduction is once again going to take more computational power. The default is automatic reduction, but I have set it to enhanced reduction just to show you the difference. So let's go ahead and turn this warp stabilizer back on. And uh, I'm not even sure if this is going to play for us because it requires so much computational juice. Yeah, so uh, it won't play for us on a preview. The warp stabilizer asks so much of your system that you're going to sacrifice some of the playback just because it's asking so much of your CPU. However, I do have a fully rendered H.264 format 1080p of this video that we can check out at the end. Uh, but first, I want to check out one more thing, and that's the difference between the rolling shutter ripple and the rolling shutter repair. So under the warp stabilizer, we do have this rolling shutter ripple option, but if you have a clip that does require simply rolling shutter repair, then we do have that specific tool. And all we need to do is type in rolling. And you can see rolling shutter repair shows up. And all we need to do is drag and place. But I've already placed it on this clip already, so I'll just turn it on. Under our effects control, rolling shutter repair. So before I show you what it looks like with the rolling shutter repair on, let's get a, a good look at this clip again. Looks pretty choppy. There's some distortion and some funky stuff going on. But when we turn on the rolling shutter repair, you can see this one a little better. Nope, that's not true either. Well, in any event, I'll be able to pull up that rendered video and show you in a second. But I did want to point out the difference between the rolling ripple repair, that's a standalone effect just like the warp stabilizer, and the fact that the warp stabilizer does have a little embedded rolling shutter ripple that's intended to do basically the same thing. So without further ado, let's go ahead and play that film here. First of all, here we have Jack in the stable version. Like I said, it's not perfect, but it's way better than it was. And then we have the second video. This still looks way bad. So that's actually very interesting to take note of. By using the warp stabilizer and relying on the rolling shutter ripple, we've kind of done ourselves a disservice. It actually warps the picture worse than it was before. So that one didn't work out. 
However, when we use the rolling shutter repair on the same clip, you can see it does a little bit better. That high shutter rate is still getting in the way and we'd have to tweak a few more things to get that to look good. But you can see the rolling shutter is no longer a problem. Everything is vertical and it basically looks as it should. So that's the warp stabilizer and its sort of counterpart, the rolling shutter repair. I suggest that the next time you have a clip that you're about to cut because it's too shaky, just take out the warp stabilizer and experiment a little bit and see if you can get it to where it's serviceable. Of course, this isn't going to work 100% of the time on 100% of your clips, but it's a great place to start and it may end up saving a shaky clip that you actually really like. So thanks for watching this week's Productivity Enhancer. Until next time.